All right, so I'm back out at the shop today. Just got back in from Florida yesterday and out on the road. Had some issues out of my truck. And I'm going to let you know ahead of time, if you own a diesel, it's just a matter of time before you're going to be working on it. I don't care. It doesn't matter, Duramax, Cummins, Power Stroke. It don't matter. If you got a diesel, the issues are going to come up every now and then. Uh, love the truck. It's still a good motor and all. It's just, you're always going to have something going on here and there throughout the years. So anyway, this time I'm driving down 95, coming out of Florida, hit a little incline, had just a little boat behind me. Uh, it's not hooked up right now. It's a little sea nymph from the other videos. If you watch the channel and, uh, so it's not very heavy. Got the golf cart and stuff in the back of the truck, which, you know, again, it's not like it's loaded very heavy or anything, but just hitting a little incline there, getting ready to come into Georgia, and I'm going up a bridge or something, I don't remember. I could just tell when I'm giving it the pedal, it was just really lagging, and I know how the truck runs normally, and it just, I was giving it more and more pedal, and it was just kind of getting slower, even on that little incline, so I knew something was wrong and uh get on down the road a little ways and then i started hearing it sounded like it had a really major boost leak under the hood so i thought to myself you know i got in the pedal a little made it boost more and oh boy it was loud then it sounded like a boot blew off or something you know and anyway turns out when i got home today let me show you what i found here because, of course, last night I start looking up the videos, you know, of what was online. And most of the time it's going to be this, uh, the position sensor would be related to the P0046. That's your position sensor. It tells where the vein, where the, uh, oh man, I forget what it's called now. The disc that's in there that opens and closes the veins. And so I started looking around and I seen... Right here, this is the top of the solenoid, the actuator itself that actually positions it. That's what does the mechanical moving. And I could see it almost looked like a bunch of solder and stuff had uh, melted or whatever. And as you can see, it is very melted today. After driving it all the way home, it got worse. And there's black soot on everything. You can see where I touched the EGR cooler with my fingertip a while ago to see if it was covered. All that's coated in black, uh, even the sensor there. Sorry for the lighting in the camera, but I'm trying to show you what I found here. So then I get to looking more. I'm going to see if I can show you this on here. Let's see if I can get everything. Yeah, you can see it. See down there the clamp in the back? The clamp is completely split and broken. Let's see if I can get in here. Okay, that's the clamp back there that holds the turbo housing together to the mouth or whatever you call it. And uh, that is just split. I mean, I can reach down. And, damn, sorry, y'all. That ain't working very well. I was trying to reach over here with my other hand and show you I can wiggle the clamp. Of course, it's not working with me. but So that's what my issues seem to be. So, again, it's not always just cut and dry. You don't always just replace the sensor. Sometimes the veins inside there can get so rusted they're stuck in one position or the other. I don't believe that's my problem because they are working. Uh, the other thing was when I had the scan tool hooked up, I was trying to read the live data and look at the uh, position, what it wanted uh, desired, what the computer was telling it to do versus actual and the actual was stuck on zero to whatever it was looking for desired whether it's 32 percent or i rev it up and it would go all the way up to like say 80 percent somewhere in that area the actual never actually changed it was just stuck on zero so i knew i had a problem there i thought it was going to be the actuator solenoid but now i see the clamp broke and i don't know if that just made so much heat that it burnt the plug first for this because when I got out yesterday at the gas station after I heard all that boost leak from there I uh, did see that looked to me like solder all burned around the solenoid or the actuator so uh, it was actually that must be what did the damage is that excessive heat coming out from around the clamp 
So anyway, stay tuned, and we are actually going to try to fix this one, and we'll show you at the end of the video. You can learn with me if this fixes it or not, because the couple of videos I've seen on there where they're changing the sensors and all, some of them don't even drive it and show you. They just say, okay, that should fix it. We are going to find out, so stick around till the end. All right, so as you can see, the clamp has a split in it. Sorry for shaking this. It's just a little stand I got set up. But right here is the uh, actual split. So I'm being a cheapy right now. I did order a new clamp and I ordered the uh, actuator, the solenoid. So what I'm going to do though is, and I see why the clamp broke. This is on the very bottom. It's got a little tiny hole there, almost like a drain hole or something for it. And uh, so there's only metal on the two sides, and I guess it just split over the years, you know. This truck only has 350000 on it, so why it broke, I can't imagine. <clears throat> Boy, I'll tell you, as much as uh, beads I just put on both sides... It's probably good to go. I could probably just run it like that. Just run a little bead down it like so. <laughs> I left a little drain hole in the middle. But uh, that would probably work, to be honest. I don't know if I'm going to trust it or not. <clears throat> Alright, so I slid the clamp back around. Squeezed it together good enough to get the nut back on it. Because I had to separate it. So that that big gap where it broke would close. Now we're just going to zip it on down. It's got to be tight. It's got to be torqued to that many inch pounds. So uh, that's something else very important, I'm sure. So don't break the clamp again. And so nothing separates or leaks any boost because obviously she was leaking boost pretty bad. Like I said, you can see where all the heat fried this and put that black soot coating on everything. Melted into the solenoid. So I cut my wires, I wind up cutting them at different lengths so the butt connectors will be offset. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. Oh yeah, now we've got a bunch of crud on the end of the solenoid there. So I was looking at my new solenoid versus the old one, just holding them up for comparisons. And uh, just checking everything out ahead of time before I even put it in the hole. Of course, I did get a cheap one on eBay. Um, I can already see a very noticeable difference in the end here in the plunger area. Um, I can see some wear there, of course, on the tip of this one. But it does not stick out as far as this one either. It doesn't have any... I thought, you know, it's spring-loaded, it's working. But it doesn't have anywhere near as much movement as this one. So, we're going to give this one a try and hope for the best. Alright, so I didn't go through all the trouble of filming, actually changing this valve, uh, the solenoid. But what I wanted to show is some of the highlights of what I did. So, I uh, want to just go over a few things. I... Just take a 14, bust this loose just a hair, and move this out of the way. Now, if you've got quarter drive stuff, you may not have to do that. I didn't have quarter drive. I could only find, because it's a 5 16 or 8 mil, it has to be the 12 point. I only had 3 8 drive stuff. I only had a shallow, which is not quite long enough. So then I had to use this little adapter that I happen to have. It's a short extension. And uh, that gave me the perfect length to fit in here because, see, I've still got an EGR cooler. So uh, I couldn't just put a extension over it and it reach and be in the right position under there, especially with the larger 3H drive sockets. 
So anyway, I just kind of unloosened that a hair, moved my line back out of the way, uh, took the bolt out, no problem, no issue, used my big magnet here, pulled it right back up out. Um, I stuffed a rag in there so everything wouldn't drop down if it did fall. And luckily it didn't fall, it just fell onto the rag. I used the uh, magnet, lifted the hole. I lifted the bolt and it brought the socket and everything out with it because this magnet's so strong. But anyway, so I went ahead and matched up the solenoids. Okay, then with the new solenoid, I was pushing it into place. I don't know if the veins are stuck still, but the valve would not quite, the solenoid wouldn't go all the way in and seat nicely. So I just more or less slid the bracket on, stuck the bolt down in there, started threading it in, uh, got everything matched up, lined up, then stuck the ratchet on, tightened it down until it pretty much made the solenoid seat and pop. And it was a hair off still, so I took, after the bolt was all the way tight, obviously the bracket was stretched a little, up top had a small gap, soon as I took and smacked it on the back side right here, it just popped right in perfectly. So the O-rings, I guess, were what was holding it. Uh, went ahead and peeled my line back, my wire, to make sure. I figured they would be two different colors. I didn't want to have them reversed polarity, where it's operating the solenoid the wrong way. So I left just enough on my old one here to where I could see it was brown and blue. The brown was the one towards the firewall. So then I brought the harness up here where I could work on it easier. Cut them two different lengths to where the buck connectors would not be in the same spot. So now I can put another piece of uh, covering on it. Um, more or less, I put the new pigtail, got it plugged in. I want to go ahead and get this baby started up and clear the code. Let's see if this even did anything. And also I wanted to mention when I was putting that bolt back in with the socket, I always put a dab of Vaseline in the end of it. Uh, actually I took the head of the bolt and just dipped it in the Vaseline. That way it sticks in the end of the socket and won't just fall out. So that worked wonders there too. Okay, not that I want to jinx myself, but it seemed to be running fine. I drove it down the road. Uh, it's got plenty of power like it should. I can, um, I had to get it up to temperature for one thing so it can go through its own reset procedure, but it did not set the check engine light or anything this time. And when I brought it back and parked it, and I started it, went around back and listened, and I could hear through the exhaust, you can hear the difference on these when you first start them up. The uh, veins, I guess, go through their procedure to, I don't know if it's a check or what it's doing, but everything, you could definitely tell it's working. So uh, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna have to leave that clamp on there that I welded. I hope and pray it holds together. Um, but I really don't want to take the turbo off just to put the clamp. So we're going to ride with it for now. Hope for the best. I guess if it does break, I'll have to go a step further. That would mean I have issues going on probably inside the turbo anyway. We'll worry about it at that time. But for right now, we're good to go. Thanks for watching Vast Motorsports. Hope you like what you're seeing. Give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel you can stay up to date on what happens with the duramax and all my other projects we're always working on something around here right jasp